Today's topic, are you allowed to steal to save your friend's life? This, for those of you that studied perhaps morality at all, what are you laughing? We did this in ethics class. And we just did this in psych this morning. Okay, let's hear if secular ethics jives with Jewish ethics. That's a great question. Now, this question becomes very famous for those of you that are studying moral philosophy by the gentleman of the name of Lawrence Colbert. Lawrence Colbert is a professor in Columbia. I'm pretty sure he's passed away. And he dealt a lot with moral education. His thesis was, if people study moral education, they become more moral. I'm not quite sure that's right, but not, that's not the purpose of today's conversation. What I want to do today is, I want to tell you about the famous Heinz Dilemma. It has nothing to do with ketchup, right? And I want to withhold giving up these handouts so you don't, you know, cheat. <laughs> so here we go. There's a gentleman by the name of Heinz, and his wife is deathly ill. He needs, oh really? He needs to figure out a way to cure his wife's ailment. There's a doctor, there's a professor, there's a researcher, we'll call him Dr. Smith, who has invented the, a medication, a pill, that it would cure Heinz's wife from her ailment. He has invested many years of research, labs and time and energy, and let's say for argument's sake, he is selling this pill for one million dollars because he has put in ten years of his life into it. Heinz goes around, does crowdfunding, does speaks to his friends, speaks to his you know whatever. He's only able to raise half a million dollars, meaning he's short. The question is: Is he allowed to steal the drug? That is the question. Now. Kuberg was interested in how you responded to it, not what you said, but how you said it and why you said it. So I also am very interested in that. So what do you think? Is Heinz allowed to steal the drug? Yes, no. What are the issues? What are the questions? What's the thought process that's involved and how you're going to arrive at this answer? I want to hear what you have to say. Take it away. Yes. Yay or nay and why? Yes. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but, um, I mean, for me, like, when I hear this question, yes. it's, I don't look at Heinz, I look at the guy who's, um, who made the drug, because to him is, I think the question should be, you know, is he allowed to withhold it from somebody, despite the fact that, you know, it, it, he's, he's, it's someone who's going to die as a result. So that's all, like, I don't know, just for me, like, Heinz is, you know, it's a secondary question, but the first question is about the, the man who's depriving someone of the ability to get better. That's also, any, every doctor has to go through that problem because, like, they're, they have to pay at some point. If somebody can't pay, right. it's like, what are you supposed to do? Fair. So, I actually don't want to focus on the doctor's dilemma. Sorry. I want to focus, no, it, I mean, it's a fair question. But I want to focus on Mr. Ketchup, Heinz Ketchup. Okay? Yeah. If it's a Which, by the way, is the, Heinz is the first major American company to, mm -hmm. that went kosher. In the 1930s, they got like the OU going. So we're very <laughs> akara satov to them. So yes, um, Heinz or Yeah. If it is um, a life and death situation, which you mentioned, right? Right. Um, then if you have the intention of paying them back, maybe after the fact, then it would not be so. Um, so you're saying steal the drug today and pay them back yeah. down the road? Yeah. Okay. That's for anybody else want to throw out their opinion or analyze it. Aren't you allowed to do anything to save a life? Like, except for like that. Oh, um, very interesting. There's a principle of the Talmud, the Gemara talks about, is what you're allowed for, to save someone's life. For Pikoch Nafesh, what can you do? Almost anything except for. Killing? Uh, no? Murder? Like, yeah, the three sins. It's not the same. Oh, no. Right? Cardinal. Okay, what's called the three cardinal sins? Murder? Shvichus Damim. Second one is. Of a desire which is idol worship, and the third is Glorias, which is basically forbidden relationship, it says. So, I'm stealing. I don't see stealing as not murder. Stealing is not. For, uh, okay, so I should be allowed to steal the drug. What's the problem? Is that a fair analysis? Yeah, in the Holocaust, they used to steal food. They used to steal food all the time. 
Now, here's what's interesting. Would it matter if this doctor made this drug for his wife? Would you then be allowed to come and steal that drug? Uh, is there limited supply? I mean, limited supply. supply? Yes, limited supply. Limited supply. supply of everything in the world, right? So, uh, sometimes my children think there's an unlimited supply of money. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. Hey, anyone? Would that make a difference? Yeah. Can't well, kill it would make a difference. Can't kill somebody in the same way off. Okay, careful. Not killing. What are you doing? They're taking a Right. It's not direct. It's indirect, right? Right, but it's also indirect for him to steal. They're both indirect. Right, 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 for sure. Okay. Let's take a look at a couple of very interesting sources. I still can't show them to you yet because I didn't give away the answer. Okay, I gave English a couple of English sources, so I, I found that people just go to the English and they read it. They... The main source that all this is dependent upon is the following case in the Talmud. King David, David Amalekh, is fighting a war with the Plishtim. The Plishtim, these Philistines, who are not Palestinians, these Plishtim are hiding among the barley fields in, you know, the southwestern plains in Israel. King David asks his religious advisors, Am I allowed to... Oh, anyway, and these fields belong to a private person. Am I allowed to burn down the fields of Ruvain? So that I'll be able to defeat the police team. Police team won't be able to attack me. If they're hiding, if I get rid of these, the field, they'll be revealed, they'll be covered, I'll be able to win the war. So am I allowed to destroy someone's personal property in order to be saved, to save, to be victorious? Am I allowed to do it? Ever hear the connection between the two cases, between Heinz and Lama? The answer he receives is very peculiar. Listen to this answer and tell me what you think. I'm going to read you what the Talmud says. The Gemara says, so here's a question. Can you save your life at the expense of someone else's? Miula, kesef, money. Shalchule, he sent him a response. Asr lahatzil atzmo b'mamon chavero. You're not allowed to save your life with someone else's friend. With someone else's, sorry, at the expense of someone else's money. Aval bat. You're the king. If a king wants to build a highway, they can build a highway. If a king wants to build a uh, subway, they can just build a subway. So therefore, you're a king, you want to burn down this field, you're allowed to burn down this field. Now, if I end here, what appears to be the conclusion of the Gemara? Depends on the prestige of the person. So the average Joe Schmo in our Heinz case, would it be allowed to steal the drug? No. It appears not. It says, I'll read you the words, Asur Chavero. You're not allowed to steal to save someone else's life. But what about what we just said earlier? But I don't understand. Aren't the three cardinal sins? The Talmud conjures each other? What's going on? How are you supposed to understand this? So I understand the king case, the king trumps it, he's the king, he can do whatever he wants. But the average Joe Shmo is not allowed to steal a sewer. You're not allowed to steal from someone at the expense of someone else to save a life. Really? So why doesn't the Talmud want to list the cardinal sins? You know, you go to a class, go, oh, today everybody, we're going to learn the three cardinal sins in Judaism, you have to die for it. I don't think anyone's going to say, oh yeah, one of them is stealing. Although, there is a minority opinion that says that. <laughs> I'm not sure if I brought it down, but I saw it somewhere. Okay, now we're ready for sources. Um, they're not double sided, there are two pages. One has English. And it has a little cute blue box with a little red thing on the bottom, and the other does not. Two pages, so take two. 
If you want to take one, you need two. Yeah, that was silly. That one just went all the way around. There you go. The one, the papers. Go round and round. Okay, now, what we need to figure out is how are we supposed to resolve this major conundrum? Everyone has a copy? Excellent. Here we go. Can I ask a question? Yes. Legally, they'd say no, right? According to Canadian law? Yeah. Okay, so I was going to actually talk about that. Uh, I found my computer here. I looked into it. According to Canadian law, you are allowed to. You're allowed to steal? Yep, to save your life. I found it. But but not if it was at the expense of somebody else, obviously. Yeah. If, if it was a limited supply and it's in the possession of Oh, oh okay, yeah. Meaning, I mean, uh, I mean, anything you steal is finite. So I would be allowed to go into your house. I'll give you an example that everyone talks about. Everyone talks about a case of a diabetic who is having an attack and is in desperate need for something sweet. They're walking at York University and they walk by the little Macola downstairs, the little shop downstairs. Can they grab an OJ, a chocolate bar, because they need sugar, because they're having a diabetic attack? So, what are you doing? You are stealing to save your life. Everyone says you're allowed to do that. Canadian law says you're allowed to, you're allowed to steal diabetic and steal oranges or a chocolate bar in order for you to save your life. Now, this is also very, so that's Canadian law. But there's one important component. Is the story over? In a mask. Ah. You must offer compensation. If the OJ is 250, you need to pay back 250. So the question is, do you need to pay back 250? Or, in our case, would you need to pay back the missing, I don't even remember how much money I said, $500,000, $500, $500, $500, $500, $500, $500, whatever it was. Now, here's what else which is fascinating. Now, what happens in a case where um, you're drowning and I'm walking by? What am I obligated to do? Okay, yeah, you know. What am I obligated to do? Save the person's life. What is that called? If you don't do it. What's the of the phrase? Al Tamod. Don't stand idly by your neighbor's dying. So everyone says, here's the proof. I'm a store owner. There's a person who's having a diabetic attack. I need to give them my chocolate bar. Orange juice. I'm obligated. That's an obligation. You must give them that chocolate bar, the orange juice. If you give them a chocolate bar and orange juice, afterwards you're like, oh, you're alive? That's great. Here's the bill. <laughs> yeah, but that's looking at the perspective from... From me, my perspective. Oh, from my perspective. From on the store owner's perspective, I see a person having a diabetic attack. I'll tell them what I've done. What's the difference if I jump in the water to save them? Or if I give that person a chocolate bar or orange juice, right? It's the, same, it's the same thing. I need to do what it takes to save a person's life. Whether jumping in the water or giving up a chocolate bar. I'd like, probably rather give up a chocolate bar than jump in the water. Right? Now, here's something fascinating. Am I obligated? Sorry. Can I ask to get paid back? Yes. Can I give you a bill for my chocolate bar? Yes. Can I give... I can? Why? Why not? You just saved your life. Did you know the person was um, dying? Yeah, I see when I'm in diabetic attack. I said, oh my goodness, here. Take the chocolate bar. You're better now? Yeah, you're better. Okay, good. Pay back two bucks. It's not nice, but... I'm, I'm, I'm not a feeling guy. Forget feelings. <laughs> Why is that different than somebody being, like, hungry, let's say? Like, either way, you're fulfilling a need. And it's... If I'm obligated to do something, halachically, can I get paid back for it? No. Uh, you're not allowed to. No? I'm obligated to do something. If I have a chiv, right? If I have an obligation to perform a mitzvah, I can't get compensation for it. So here's the question that people ask is, if a person takes a chocolate bar, first of all, I don't understand. Does it contradict the Gemara? The Gemara says, you're not allowed to save your life with someone else's money. So I don't understand. What about, aren't they obligated to give up my chocolate bar? 
How can you follow? This person who owns this barley patch, isn't he obligated to give up his barley patch for King David or for anybody? Yes, burn down my field. So that you'll save. That's my obligation. I got to give up my chocolate bar. I got to jump in the water. I got to remove my barley. This is a person's life. This isn't like, you know, whatever. Okay. This leads to the commentaries to go crazy and try to figure out how to understand this Gemara. Because the Gemara at surface level is nonsensical. Not only is it irrational, but it contradicts major concepts in Jewish law of the value of life. Why does the Talmud say you cannot save your life at the expense of someone else's money? How do they say such a thing? Doesn't that contradict everything else that we learn? Only three cardinal sins. Why does the Talmud seem to say, no, 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 can't do it. What's going on here? I want, I want people to appreciate the conundrum. If you don't appreciate the conundrum, you don't appreciate the answer to the conundrum. So, again, the Talmud seems to say, you're not allowed to. King David was allowed to because he's a king. The average Joshimo, Asur, Latzil, Atzimo, Bimon, Chavero. What about violating two important principles? One, don't sin idly by while your friend is dying. And two, there are only three cardinal sins that you're supposed to die for. And stealing isn't one of them. Question, question. So we talked about the status of the person that's stealing, but what about the status of the person that's being stolen from? Like, does that, is that taken into account? Like, if it's somebody that's, let's say, a doctor versus somebody that doesn't make a big living or something like that, like, is it a difference to steal from one than the other? What's the matter if I'm a multimillionaire or if I'm a rabbi? <laughs> What's the ma- why does it matter? <laughs> why does it matter? If you steal from one, it's not as much of an impact as if you steal from the other. If I'm obligated to save a life, does economics matter? So if I only have this cookie to live off of, this is my last cookie of my life, Right, and if I don't need this cookie, I'm going to die in three hours from now. I have no way, right? Uh, so then by you taking this cookie, it's like, that's one thing. Well, she also killed you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If, if you're, you're affecting the other person more because like, you might be killing them if they have a very small... Right, uh-huh. Okay. Very interesting. So in the event, this goes back to my first case, that if my wife also needs this pill, you can't steal it from me. I'm going to give it to her tomorrow. Right? Do you, you need orange juice because you had a, um, a diabetic shock. That I need the orange juice to live off of. It's my last liquid I have in my house forever. Right? I just ran the marathon in Miami. I need liquid or someone to die too. Right? Listen, I, I can't really commiserate. I ran five miles last year and I couldn't walk down my stairs without pain until like Thursday. But it was, it was quite, thank you so much. But it was quite painful. So, I can't imagine half a marathon. <laughs> it's just two and a half times that. Yes? I'm just confused about the cardinal sins because I thought you were allowed to kill for self-defense. You are... Oh, so I, I, let me explain the case better because that's a good point. The case that we're talking about is, is that someone comes with a gun and says, okay, if you don't kill George, I'm going to blow your brains out. You need to take the bullet. Yes, okay. But you are right. You are allowed to kill for self Good question. But you can't, the Gemara says, your blood isn't redder than someone else's. You'd not be allowed to kill somebody to save your life. You have to take the bullet. You cannot actively kill somebody to save your life. That's the... Okay, yeah. So the whole, the whole concept, you can't, you also aren't allowed to save a life if it risks your own life. And something, I mean, this is something that, that we learned with, like also, Yaakov, that not having any money can also be counted as being dead. Like, that's one of the things, that's why. So Talmud says, Ani chashuv kemet. A poor person, a person who's impoverished is considered dead. Mm-hmm. Be very careful. I don't remember where I did this. Did do this here? Embarrassing somebody is if you're killing them. Mm-hmm. Is that so much so that's part of the, like, literally, like, better to pull the trigger? That's not going to really say that, right? So be careful when the Talmud says, this is as if. As if is not, you know. 
Right. The, the Gemara often speaks in hyperbolean statements. They often speak in these, you know, like, um, I'll give you another example. The Talmud says in a few places, whoever transgresses the word of the rabbis is punishable by death. Really? Really? No. But at least they say it. <laughs> so take what the rabbis say seriously, not always literally, right? They're trying to show that this is very important. The Gemara says, oh, you know, Davi Mark, if you don't listen to what the rabbis say, you're Chayv Mita. Well, you should really? No. The rabbis can kill you. So, yeah. But they're wrong. Take the rabbis say seriously. They're not saying they don't trust the rabbis. But they, don't, they never meant that. They meant to prove a point, say something. So, so we say in Ani Chashiv Kemet, does that really mean that, oh, before, uh, you know, I have to take a bullet and not become poor? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. What I pointed out, take a look at the source sheet. Rashi makes a very odd statement. There's a transgression for a regular person to steal to save a life. Meaning, King David's allowed to because he's a king, but Rashi seems to imply that everyone else is not allowed to do it. This is very problematic. The Gemara and Hedron says there only are three cardinal sins. I don't see stealing. I don't see thievery on this list. Now, comes on the rush and says, and the truth is it's a rush, it's a tosvos, the reshore and the commentaries on the Gemara say, time out, you're misunderstanding the Gemara. The Gemara really means the following. David Melech, after he burns down the person's field, is David or the royal palace obligated to pay the person back compensation? That, says the Talmud, a king is exempt from. But if you were a regular Joe Shema, what does it mean that Asur Chavero? It should be taken to understand without paying them back. <laughs> if you're going to pay them back, you'd be allowed to steal from your friend to save a life. But to, right? Let's put Anna, Anna on the spot. Anna, you're allowed to steal to save a life. <laughs> Call a friend? <laughs> right? Can you steal? The, so uh, it appears from here. So the rush says, I don't understand. The whole discussion in the Talmud. By the way, this isn't, if I take the Talmud, what it really says, it doesn't seem to imply that. It says, a sword, you're not allowed to steal to, to save a life. The rush and the Tuzon argue, no. The Gemara is really saying... You're not allowed to steal to save a life and not pay them back. You follow? But you have to, if you're going to steal, pay them back. Whereas King David is exempt because he's the king and king of everyone's. Might be a nice thing to pay them back, but you're not obligated to if you're a king. Joe Schmo. So therefore, if we take this to our Heinz dilemma, what do we see from here? You can if you pay them back. But what, what would be considered like the status of a king these days? Like, is there anything that would match to that? Government. So that's an excellent question. The Nitziv over there is. Uh, that's a Torah too. That's not the Nitziv. And Emek Davar, which we don't have here. Okay, it's fine. Says very interesting. Parsha Shoftim. He's talking you know, 150 years ago. He says that maybe in a modern day democracy, a king has a sorry. An elected official has the status of a king. This is major ramifications for politics in Israel. Because the majority of Jews would ever vote for a prime minister, which doesn't happen because most Jews live in America or outside of Israel, then that person might have a status of a king. That's crazy. That's why the, in the religious Zionist world, an elected official has a tremendous status. It's an elected official appointed by... Okay, it's a conversation for another time, but it's a very excellent question. The status of an elected official. And by the way, to some extent, that's true in Toronto. If the government decides they want to build a highway or a subway, they do. It's not very good for elections. If they make 100 people kick out of their homes and to the front page of the paper, that's not good for politics. They're going to have to compensate you. My uh, father, over some remembers, he grew up, and I'm sure many of you are my grandparents did downtown Toronto. 
So when hydro decided to buy, they needed to, to expand electricity for roads. Sorry, we're buying this. You're out in 90 days. That's what it was. Actually, want to hear a crazy story? The Allen Road. Everyone know the Allen Road? Yeah, ever notice? You get on the Allen Road, and you're at Finch, it's different. You're traveling south, and you're going, and it's great. Hits Eglinton, it's stuck. What's going on with the highways there? Who makes a highway for just a couple of kilometers? You know what the answer is? Jews. <laughs> there was such opposition south of Eglinton by various communities, they stopped building the highway. The plan was to make that Allen Road, which makes sense. Now, we suffer because of it, because north-south is terrible here. There's only one north-south highway in the entire city. It's all the way far east, the Don Valley, which is called Don Valley Parking Lot, because it's a terrible highway. But if the Allen Road went all the way downtown, you know how damn much it really... You speak to people, and they say, oh, how do you go downtown? I take bathrooms. Who, what city in North America do you take streets to go downtown? Right? Think about it. You can take bath. That's how many people take bathrooms all the way downtown. Dufferin all the way downtown. Right? That's not normal for a metropolitan city. Right? It doesn't exist in any city in North America that you take side streets, even out of of the main street to go downtown. It just doesn't exist. In Toronto, all the time. Right? We're so, the problem, you know, we're so used to it, we don't realize it's a problem. Right? But it's not normal to take you know, a street that you can live on and take it all the way downtown. And that's like the most efficient way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would the halakha say if it was, um, let's say, Jew and non-Jew? Like, what it, what it? We don't. It, a very interesting question. We don't see a distinction. Now it does. I, I'll tell you why. It's meaning asur Sometimes a chaver is only referring to a Jew. Right. Um, stealing from a non-Jew is also very interesting. Can you steal from a non-Jew? Um, so you're not allowed to. The question is, why aren't you allowed to? That's a ranging conversation in the Gemara. The halachas do not deserve from a non-Jew. The question is, why not? Is it the same as a Jew, different than a Jew? So that's a, that's a very interesting discussion. Halacha lemaisa, you're not allowed to. It might, be, it might be a little bit different than stealing from a Jew. You just can't do it. Rav Shechter, the Rosh Kola, why you? He says, why can't you cheat on your taxes? So much, it's unethical, it's because the government, he actually holds, cheating on your taxes is so problematic, you're actually stealing from Jews. Think about it. If I cheat on my taxes, $500, I'm making every single one of you pay more money now. Right? Because someone has to pay for stuff. So by me cheating, I'm actually stealing money from both Jews and non-Jews in my city, municipality, um, country, you know. Also, don't you have to follow the laws of Yeah, okay, okay, but, but, but he's saying it's even more severe than that. So you're stealing from Jews, more than just Dina Dumachusa, Dina. Of course not. So, okay. So that's the, so the rush, that is what the rush, the rush were to comment on the Talmud, that's what he says. Now, the Shukhan Arach, when it comes to codify this law, take a look at the bottom of that page. <clears throat> he says the following. Afilu b'sakanat mavet. You can follow in English. I will read the Hebrew. V'tzarich l'gzol et chaviro g'day latzil nasho. A person is in danger of dying. He needs to steal from his friend to live. Tzarich shelo yikachena. You're not allowed to take it. Ella al dat l'shalem. You're taking that orange juice. You're taking that chocolate bar. You're burning down that field with the intent to come say back. And meaning, wait, here's another question. What about if Heinz owes a million dollars to pay this medical person? And Heinz is like, I will never be able to raise a million dollars. I will never earn enough money to pay this back. But I'm going to steal it anyways. Maybe that would actually be a problem. So if I steal the money, I'm like, listen. I raised seven hundred thousand dollars out of a million dollars in three months. I need to give my wife this drug in the next few days, or she's gonna die. I'll steal the drug, and then I have three months, six months, nine months to figure out how I'm gonna pay. That would be permissible. If you're not in prison. What? If you're not in prison. So, the, again, I just told you. According to Canadian law, you can steal to save a life. Why would you go to prison for him? If you can prove in a court of law. I broke into your house and I stole orange juice because I needed it because I was having a, or my child was having a diabetic seizure, I would actually not go to jail. 
That's Canadian and American law. American? I believe so. Actually, it's American law. I'm assuming it's Canadian too. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong. The, the problem is, I'm assuming it is. The problem with Canadian law is that it's just, it's just not. You know, you do Google searches, American law stuff pops up. It's just the way it goes. I'm sure if I asked you, if anybody here is a family member who's a lawyer, you know. <laughs> so you can ask your brother. Because your brother sues doctors. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Every person needs to be able to count them. Okay, isn't that. This is interesting. So maybe you could argue that if Heinz is still in the drug, saying I'll never get to raise a million dollars, I don't intend to, it's too difficult, I could barely do the first million, then maybe he actually would not be allowed to steal the drug if he intends never to pay them back. As opposed to a chocolate bar, as opposed to uh, oranges, I think everyone can figure out how to pay that back. You can't say there's no way. Like, you can't say that, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have money right now. I mean, I could say there's no way. I could be like, I'm not even going to try. Well, yeah. Then you know you're not Right. So we don't really do slavery today. It's not, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're doing modern. Stuff. You can always like raise money. Like, there's always ways. You can't just like tell the shun. There's no way. <laughs> Again, my intent is. Not, I'm not listening. Yeah, I'll give this guy a million bucks. He's asking for two. It's exorbitant. It's too much money. I don't want to deal with it. My wife is sick. Right. Give you a million dollars. I'll, I'll, I'll smash into your house. I'll leave a million dollars. I'll take the pill. I'll walk out. Go right. get them in dollars for me. Forget it, I'm not going to do And And because the language of the Shulchan Arach is. I'm taking it with the intent to pay. I.e., if I don't have the intent to pay the person back, maybe I can't take it. It's a very powerful statement. It appears that the Shulchan Arach is saying. So. Okay. Um. Okay, those are the, um, if you take a look at this Ramban, in the second source, flip the page, or the second page, the, the, the Ramban actually quotes a source that says, Gimel Devarim, second line there, Eich om diem bifinei b'goch nefesh, let's just say E, not Eich, ve'eluhem, and they are, avodah zar gara shechadamim, which is the big three, three cardinal sins, Rabbi Meir Omer Afagezel. We actually do see an opinion that holds stealing is equal to murder, or as severe as murder. Wow! Right? They never taught that to me in school, right? Never taught that. So very interesting how now. By the way, you know what might be the rationale for this? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, stealing a life, stealing money. Okay, but money's so different than, than life. Isn't Gazelle a very... Spe- I, I forget the translation for it. Isn't Gazelle very... It's like there's different levels of stealing and there's different titles for it. Yeah. I don't remember what Gazelle is. Yeah, so, so literally, Gazela is... It's two in the afternoon. I say, hey, Rachel, hey, how you doing? You're like, great. I'm like, great. And I take your wallet. It's forcibly taking your money in front of you. As opposed to at two in the morning, I sneak around your house, take it. I think that's worse. Which, which one's worse? Breaking into somebody's house and or is secretly taking something from somebody. Okay, that's uh, interesting. Not the halacha doesn't feel that way. Halacha feels sorry, sorry. Halacha does feel that way because you don't care about God or man. You, know, you do it at two in the morning because you're afraid of man and you're stealing, so you're afraid of God. If you take it two in the afternoon, at least you're not afraid of God or man. <laughs> at least you're consistent. <laughs> Might not be smart, but you're but you're Chazal said by Noah what brought the seal upon the destruction of the people of the times of the Mabu? Fatimalei Haaret Hamas says Rashi Lo Nigzira I know it's Rashi off the heart, but I want to make sure I'm reading it properly. Without it off the heart. Gezel Shinema. Where's that? Yeah. That the Gzera was decreed on them because of a Gezel. Because of stealing. Anyways, trust me, it's there somewhere. Okay. I don't know, it's Rashi somewhere. 
So anyway, it's very interesting how, how, how Rav Merli says how stealing is quite serious. Now, I want to show you. Oh, go to the fourth source. One, two. It's a Shumar Sham. He says, V'ktzat yishlomar, there are those who say, De gezel is in have of Yisrael's Yisrael It's like a mini or an offshoot of murder. Like the Gemara, Kmosh Rambu Gemara and Baba Kama, the Gezel Chaviroh Pruta, a person who steals a pruta five cents from a friend, kilu no tel nishmato. You're taking a person's soul. I steal from you. I'm ripping out your soul. Why? If I steal from you, what essentially am I saying? That you're less. You're less value than. You're less. I'm more than you. You you have those ten dollars. I should have the ten dollars. You're blowing against God because what are you saying? I determine how much money I should have allotted to me. And if I feel you have more than I do, or yes, more than I do, I can take it from you. So therefore, I devalue you. I'm not stabbing a knife into your chest, but I'm ripping something away from you. I'm devaluating you. I'm taking something that you have that you worked for. And I'm saying, no, mine, mine, mine. It should be mine. I'm forcibly ripping it from you. So he says that's a little bit tantamount to death in a certain way. So, and he actually says that a chassid, this is wild, should give up his life rather than steal. He's not like talking about a chassid, you know, with like a black furry hat and like a long bag of coat, that's how you're referring to. I think a pious person shouldn't even steal so quickly even to save his life. Is he basing it off the Ramban? Wow. What? Basically. He's basing it off the Ramban and the Gemara Baba Kama, yeah. Many people disagree and say it's not even pious. You shouldn't do it at all. Meaning, it isn't pious not to do it. You should do it. It might even be a mitzvah to do. You're saving a life. If saving a life is so important, steal to save a life, right? No, I've, uh, you know, this person is having a diabetic and they're having, uh, they're in shock. I'm going to be so from and not take the orange juice from that guy and say I'm going to drop dead. You're so from, you're, you're going to be a fool, right? So interesting. Um, yet, there's an opinion that says no. Be very pious, you shouldn't even steal to save your life. That is not the accepted normative practice, but I want to point out how serious stealing is. So I found a source that says it's really bad. Um, but, anyways, so I think just to conclude, because um, they're arguing a little bit late, I think that the con- final conclusion is you can steal, you have to be able to pay them back. Very interesting to flip it on the morality of the person who owns a drug how much can they charge? Should they overcharge? Are they allowed to overcharge? They gotta make money, they gotta live themselves, and if someone else needs that drug and you're taking it from them, someone's in line at chemotherapy and you push them away and you go to chemotherapy, right? Someone's in line for a respiratory, right? And you, so that goes back to our first semester about triage, you know, how to do that, right? The person's dealing with the drug, the person's dealing with the medicine, they have to be helped first. All of a sudden you're in an emergency, you have minutes to live, that would be very interesting. If you have minutes to live, and you can prove that, which isn't so easy. But let's say you can prove that you have five minutes left to live unless you have chemotherapy in the next five minutes. And someone's on chemotherapy and five minutes doesn't matter to them. It could be, you could push them away. Physically. It's like the water example. Right, maybe the water example. If I don't drink this right now, I'm going to die. You need this too, but you need it in tomorrow, maybe. Food for thought. Obviously, we shouldn't know about these situations. But I think there's an important value in life. In a value of recognizing what we have and what we own and its importance in, uh, in appreciating everything around us. Thank you.